Hey, are you new to beach fishing or planning a fishing trip to Morton Island soon? Well, this video is for you. In it, I'll be discussing six topics where I'll share some beginner tips on getting there, getting around the island and spot selection, fish types to expect, baits to bring and use, tackle, and some recommended gear to take with you. So welcome fellow adventurers. I'm Darren from Adventure Primal, bringing you another video to improve your fishing, boating, and four-wheel driving adventures. So let's get into it. Firstly, there are a couple of ways to get to Morton Island. You could swim there, but how would you carry your rods and tackle? That's just crazy. You could also take a boat across and anchor up off the beach somewhere. I do that on occasions. You could even fly there as there's a landing strip at Cowan Cowan and a helipad at Bulwa. But I much prefer going across there on the MyCat barge in my own four-wheel drive. This provides you some much needed transport and carrying capabilities that you just don't get any other way. The island is large and if you want to find that perfect fishing spot then you're going to have to drive around and find it. I've done a previous video on getting to Morton Island so have a look at that for some good starting information. I'll provide a link in the description below. Okay so you've arrived on the island and perhaps settled in somewhere. It's now time to go looking for your nice fishing spots. During the lower part of the tides, you'll be able to get to all parts of the island via the beaches and inland roads. I suggest you do your exploring during that time and find your nice gutters or formations because when the tide comes in, you may find that you'll be not be able to move around or get around easily. As you can see from the map, there is plenty of beach to fish. So depending on what time of year it is, will determine where the fish will be concentrated. Be mindful of the green zones. There are signs informing you of them, but they can be difficult to spot at times. Up here, along this little area, a little marine park there, and down the bottom. A major factor that determines where I fish is the wind direction. At the time of this filming, the wind was a brisk southeasterly with large swell on the eastern beach. So, I decided to fish the northern end to get some protection from the wind. We chose this spot in this location because it was going to be a high very shortly and we could still get out by the northern track even if it was high tide. It also had a nice looking deep hole that was later going to turn into a good gutter as the tide came in. Then hey, if you've got some tips on beach fishing and spot selection Please provide them in the comments below. You'll be helping out some beginners too. Okay, so the fish that I catch the most on the island is dart. They can be found on the northern and eastern sides of the island where there are waves. Dart like riding in the waves and can even see them in the waves if you look close enough. They put up a really good fight in the surf, sometimes making you think you have a much larger fish than you end up with. I have also occasionally caught smaller ones on the western side. Some people don't like to eat dart. Luckily there are whiting all around the island. They generally sit close in and only in a little bit of water. Look for nice little gutters running close along the shore and fish the edges of those. I caught this one here right on the water's edge as I was pulling in the line to check the bait. It was a nice 34 centimeter specimen that was very round. Another species found in gutters, holes and around trees and structures is the good old brim. I've mainly found them to be up the northern end of the island but I have heard that they do catch them around the southern parts of the island. I managed to find a few of them on this trip in this little hole. And 
Where there is brim, you'll generally find their very close looking cousins, tar wine. They like the same conditions and again, this hole was producing the goods. Unfortunately, they weren't quite keeper size, so they went back to grow a little bit bigger for another day. Another fish generally caught on the western side of the island is flathead. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of me catching one this time. But if you look for creek runoffs and structures that they can use for ambushing their prey, then you will generally find a flathead around. And here's a fun fish that I catch at times on the northern end of the island, long toms. They love doing some aerial acrobatics when they're trying to throw your hooks. They seem to take only white coloured baits, so if you've got something like that on, then be prepared to catch one. They've got some nice set of teeth on them, so be careful of those when handling them. You'll also get your larger species of fish like Taylor, Dew and Trevally. So I like to throw out my big rod with tackle types to suit my target. On this trip, as it was winter, I was hoping that there would be Taylor around. So I threw out a pilchard on some gang hooks. They're, they're more predominant on the eastern beach at this time of year, but conditions weren't good there. I've caught some big eye trevally close to this spot previously using small herring on two hook schnell setup late at night. There can also be mackerel and other pelagic fish going past on the northern end. But be careful, there's also sharks, so be prepared for those. The baits that you're going to want to use over on the island will depend on what you're targeting. For your bread and butter species, your yabbies and worms will be your best bet. Whilst there are some yabby pumping spots around the island, if you're short on time, it can be better for you to pump your yabbies before going to the island. That goes the same with your worm species. I find that digging rock worms and wrigglers off Red Cliff easy to do before going. So, I'll get myself a little supply of those to take over. I've done some previous videos on digging for rock worms and wrigglers, so check them out if you like. I'll put a link below. Beach worms can be found all along the eastern beach, as well as pippies. The pippies do seem to be few and far between though, but are excellent bait for dark. I personally have not yet achieved pulling a beach worm, but I've seen plenty do it there. Search YouTube for beach worming videos if you want to give it a go. Beach worms are definitely another good bait for your bread and butter species, as well as your jewfish. Prawns are also a great bait for dart, brim and whiting. I find that freshly caught ones go best of course, but you may not have that option. That and a selection of frozen baits can be purchased from castaways at Bulwa if you end up short. As I said previously, I do like to take some pilchards or hole baits for the bigger fish types that you can find on the island. So I recommend you take some with you if you can. Tackle. Tackle wise, I generally take three rods for different purposes. My first go-to rod is my 11 foot whiting rod. It's a full wrap rod, so it's nice for beach casting. I use it mainly to target whiting I've got a little Albi 500 reel on it with 8 or 10 pound line. My leader is usually 8 pound fluorocarbon, about 1 meter long, but if you can, go lighter. I'll go between a size 4 and 6 long shank hook on this rod. My next rod is a 12 footer, which is a bit stiffer. This rod I use with a much heavier sinker to get it out far. I use one, this one to target dart. They can be in close, but more often than not, they are out further in the surf, so you really got to cast some distance. The sweep on the, these beaches can also be strong, so a heavier sinker is required to slow that down. I use an LB625 shallow spool for this rod with 12 pound line on it and 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'll use a number two long shank hook on this. The third rod is a custom made 15 foot with an Albi 650 on it. This will have a line from 15 pounds to 20 pounds on it, especially for those nicer sized fish I mentioned earlier. This one I'll set up with 24 or 30 pound fluorocarbon leader and put a pyramid sinker on it with a dropper rig setup. This allows you to keep the bait on about 0.5 meters from the bottom 
The hook type will depend on what fish you're trying to target or want to use. In this video I'm using a set of 3.0 gang hooks. Remember to take that flick rod or one set up for flathead. There are plenty there. Here are some items I suggest you take with you. Beach rods and your travelling rod setup. Rod holders for sand. Snatch strap and digging gear. Remember, there's lots of sand driving. First aid kit. Esky for your baits, drinks and your catches. You could, of course, use a cartridge if you have room for one. Camp chairs. Tackle. I'll let you decide what you're taking there. Lights and headlight for nighttime fishing. Sun protection clothing. Cold and wet weather gear. Waders, good for nighttime or winter fishing. Keep watching for more on this. A wading bag and bait belt. Sunscreen. Measuring stick. Make sure you know your legal sizes and bag limits before going. Now waders. These are essential if you're beach fishing at night or in the colder weather. You will more often than not have to go in the water to cast or retrieve fish and you will be glad that you're kept dry. But remember not to go in past your waist height because if you get knocked over by a wave they could fill up and act like an anchor keeping you under the water so be careful. So this is how I look for a night of fishing on the island. Rugged up with light ready. I'll be adding my wind or rain jacket to that later as the sun goes down. Thanks for watching and remember, let me know that you're liking these videos by commenting below or hitting the like button. It's always good to hear your feedback. Until next time, happy adventuring!